All right, guys, we're back for round 12's review uh, for Supercoach 2023. The first of the buy rounds has come and gone. Uh, didn't go too great. I thought I'd set up a little bit better, um, like quick TLDR. 1,800, not a good score. Should have really been aiming for around about 1,900. Uh, 1,950, I think, was like a really good score. Um basically 4,000 in rank now. Still, you know, I was only aiming for top 5k after like round one and round two's disaster. So not the worst ever. Uh, could make it up still uh, with the buy rounds. It's kind of like a total rank gain instead of rank per round uh, because you'll have people that have just like built their team for one round. <clears throat> so going into it, uh, let's see, is this like optimized properly? Yeah, it'll, it'll do the job. Stuart was good. I uh, was thinking about the vice captain on him, but Geelong have been a bit hit or miss this this year, uh, mainly due to like midfield injury, so I wasn't super confident in it, but he's uh, still a very good player. Dacos ended up going him. Thought he was a little bit underscored, but uh, I guess it did make a bit of sense. I'll just pull up the games here so you can see the scores. Uh, you expected a bit better from against West Coast from Dacos. Uh, but West Coast actually haven't been that bad to score against. Like, I think they are last. Who did they play this week, West Coast? Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember. Adelaide. So if I just go there, they are 18th. So they're giving up the most total points to midfielders. But it really doesn't feel that way. Honestly, like, I've not seen that huge scores coming from, like, star midfielders. Dawson was a little down. Uh, I thought Crows were just going to play their brand of footy up in Darwin. Um, didn't end up being the case. I guess they got up early. It's just Gold Coast came back. And the scoreline is a bit... Uh, I mean, this was a lot closer game than the scoreline says it is. Will Day, uh, this guy has been pretty hard to <clears throat> like get a track on or anything. Don't really know what's going on. Like he's he's in position, um, he's where you want him to play as well. It's just it's not adding up. What are his touches like? <clears throat> 20, 30, uh, 24, like good numbers here, but it's just it's not translating. His efficiency must be awful. Um, and for a game type that takes efficiency so seriously, I wish they put it here. Like, it's got to be somewhere here. Like, just do the fan footy system of put these together and then chuck efficiency in. Uh, but, yeah, it must be efficiency that's keeping him down. Actually, what are his tackle numbers like? Because that's kind of been big this year, is tackle numbers. Are we at... Uh, three to four a game. Seems like around about average. Yeah. All right. Just uh, off a couple of games. Atkins was surprisingly really good. I thought this was like lucky to scrape out a 30. Um, got a 72 from him. I still think this is a trade this week because it's their buy first off. Um, so it's easiest to get rid of him and bring in someone that doesn't have their buy this week. Uh and his role isn't kind of like guaranteed. If he plays on the wing, you're going to get these 70 scores and also 28, whatever he scored last week. Chincotta, he was all right. Uh, did end up fielding him. I think he got into my top scores. Yeah, he would have. I think Angwin and Eddie got dropped out of it. Um, yeah, he was all right. Didn't see anything like super promising. Carlton as a whole have been... A like, disappointing is an understatement for them. With that list, they should be a top eight contender. Um, I mean, not even contender. They should be in the top eight. But they're just not playing like it. I think Harry Mackay is probably the worst uh, big forward, like big time, prime time forward in the AFL by a, a large margin. Um, for a while, it was Buddy this year because, I mean, I don't know why people still expect so much from Buddy. He's like 30, whatever. But, um, yeah, Mackay's the worst by far. Even he had four goals. He still looked terrible to me. 
Uh, Mitchell didn't play. Bye. Probably going to keep him. Uh, it, I, I was thinking about trading him because he's at 300k basically. So it's not the worst trade ever, but I don't know. I reckon I could still get a little bit more out of him. Then where are we at? Bont was really good, I thought. Uh, underscored, but I thought he played really good. Um, the dogs were leading this game for a long time. I think the biggest lead of the game through like the middle of the fourth for Geelong was like six points. So, uh, yeah, it, they, they were closer. Again, these two score lines are not in like they're not correctly portraying the game. They were a lot closer than the scoreline says. Uh, Merritt looked like he was going to score 250. Like, he was almost at 100 at quarter time. Um, I was so upset because I did have the captain on him. I was like, well, 125 is my line. Um, and I ended up going Dacos. And I oh, should have went Merritt. And I guess that's what uh, is pretty big in, like, rank and stuff this week. Especially during the buy rounds, you've got to get the captaincy right. But, I mean, it's it's 120 plus. I guess you can't really complain with it. Um, but he did cop the tag in the, I'd say, a couple of minutes into the second from Shields. And it, it did kill him a fair bit. Also, I guess he's ran out of tank after being so dominant in the first, first quarter. Toronto was pretty good. Uh, expected a bit more because of, like, you know, first game against GWS uh, since leaving. But, I mean, he was still good enough. I think he had a couple of goals or something like that, didn't he? Uh, where are we? Yeah, like, heaps of touches, a goal. He played absolutely fine, just uh, a low score. Laird, like I said, Adelaide is so hard to get, like, a, a real indication on... Where are they going to finish this year? Uh, they've had a lot of really good wins. They stayed competitive. Collywood uh, can't beat Gold Coast. That's a, not a great sign for a team that's supposed to be up there. I guess they are like years ahead of schedule. Um, I don't know. Expected a bit more from them, especially this week. Again, it was a lot closer than the scoreline says, but I don't know. I, I expected them to win thoroughly instead of have a close game. Rosie continues to be pretty good. Um, his low scores are both like a combination of Port's game style not being the most super coach friendly. It's a lot of corridor play, a lot of like, chance taking, but chance making, like it, it does work for him. Um, but it's not the best for super coach. Um, you even see with like Butters. Butters will have huge scores, 160 plus, but who also have low scores, which, I mean, it helps for his price, but it doesn't help you know, for scores every week. Then the GWS trio here, all of them I didn't really think were that good. I thought Tom Green was very lacking this game. Uh, he probably still had his touches and stuff. I wasn't necessarily keeping track of it yeah i mean he had heaps of touches i just don't think he actually had much of an impact on the game uh canelio was worse like i i thought canelio was actually just bad full stop this game um and one of the reasons why they couldn't like pull ahead uh especially at the end and Gwyn was terrible but i don't know had to field him Ruck line. So I did end up bringing in Tim English. Uh, he was never really in consideration for VC uh, just because the last couple of times I've brought in someone and then VC or captain them, they've given me a absolute stinker of a score. But um, in hindsight, definitely should have went for it. Against Segler, yeah. Uh, Darcy was hurt against Segler, so Tim English, fully healthy, in form should have been a vice captain or a captain. But then I guess I went day course. There was enough time in between, but whatever. Uh, the forwards. Zeeble was really bad. Uh, so bad that I think his role is about to change. They could move him up forward again or just start playing around with him. The kick-in numbers, which, give me a second, I'll bring up, uh, they just weren't in his favour. Um I don't know if I want to do this just like this, but whatever. 
uh, DFS, and then I want no, you have to go AFL kick ins. Here we are. North. Siebel, yeah, like he's lost them to Aaron Hall, which I guess we all did think was going to happen. Uh, I don't really know why they're playing Aaron Hall still. Um, I guess it's to keep some type of uh, value in him and maybe move him on at the end of the year. But I. I would personally, I would be giving him to Sheasel to build him up, uh, build up. Like season's done, right? Like North season, their their season finished in round three or four. Maybe we just play the young guys and put them in positions to gain experience. One place to gain great experience is on kick-ins because you're going to see the game all ahead of you. There's no game behind you. It's all in front of you. You get to work out contests and stuff like that. I would put Sheasel on kick-ins. Um, if not him, I'd go another young guy, Flynn Perez, who I think is injured, so he's not a great example. Um, get some young guys back there, man. Like, season's done. Just put some young guys back there. Get them some experience. Uh, yeah, so might have to move on Siebel. So he's already dropped... I want to say about 100k in two weeks. Yeah. Um, it's at 80k. Not good. He was over... Yeah, he was 600. He's dropped a fair bit. Uh, this might be the last week to trade him on at like a, a good price. After this, he's going to be in the 450s. It's going to be tough to find someone. I mean, what's that? Projected 98. He drops to 484. Yeah, I, I'd trade him on this week. If you haven't got other problems. If you've got other problems, then you, guess what? You just have to de deal with it and hope he comes good again. Sheasel, uh, low score, but I don't actually think it was too bad from him. I thought he looked attacking, just touches weren't there, and he was playing around the ground. Keep him in defense. I think he's a better defender for his first couple of years, and then move him up forward. Once like you know, you've know you developed guys up forward that are going to make Sheasel an open target, um, but yeah, Hobbs, I thought, I thought he was heaps better than a 70. I don't know if that was just me watching with bias. I thought he was way better than a 70. Uh, how many touches did he end up having? 20 some, uh, was it 21? Five tackles. I guess he didn't hit the scoreboard at all. Um, he looked good to me and he was like at 80 at full time, scaled down 10 points. So I don't know, maybe that's got something to do with it. We'll see. I think he's going to be out next. Is is there by next week? I think there's his 14, isn't it? Yeah, there's his 14. So I do have to hold him another week. And then he goes in 14. Uh, yeah, so what else have we got? Eddie, he was all right. Uh, I do like how they're playing him around the ground, both as you know someone who likes watching someone I know on the football field. Uh, I like how they're playing him around the ground. I think him use his athleticism. You know, he's a very athletic guy. I've seen him take a lot of uh, crazy hangers and stuff like that. Just play him around the ground. And then the bench, obviously, is just all DNP. As for trades, uh, Atkins is out. I think he's going to drop too much cash. Zeeble, like I said, I think he's done. Um, there's just... Too much that can go wrong with Zebel, and if he drops too much, you can't hit. I mean, already, uh, I'm going for a value pick here. He's probably going to be my value uh, F6, just because I, I don't think I'm finishing the team. Uh, the Oliver trade, bunch of dead rookies, uh, side sideways trades have killed the team. Guys like Hayden Young having to trade him out, Josh Kelly having to trade him out. Early sideways, that it's just killed the flow. Um, then move him forward, move him back. This is going to break, by the way. Uh, it always does when I do this. I should have done this afterwards. Um, let's see. Then move day into the mids. And I think that's right. No, it's not. Something's wrong here. Shouldn't I have a forward spot? No, 
Oh, because I haven't made the third trade. So, Combin also out, just getting the live bodies in. Um, I, I reckon I've planned to trade Combin out the last, like, four weeks. Uh, it just hasn't happened. So, first, you know, Brayshaw. Um, he's underpriced, I think. I think he is, like, a 600k-plus player. Uh, Frio schedule really isn't that bad. Um, let's see if I can just bring up another Frio player to look at his schedule. It's not going to let me, is it? Uh, yeah, so I can just look at one. Richmond this week. Richmond give up huge points to midfielders. GWS isn't a terrible team to go against. I've seen a couple of big scores versus them. Essendon, same thing. Uh, Dogs is a bit tough. They take all the all the points. Uh, guys like Bont, Cray, uh, Trelaw if he's playing. Liber, uh, Caleb Daniel recently. Uh, what else have we got? Collywood is terrible. Carlton's pretty good. Um, like, Collywood's terrible to play against because they take all the points. Uh, Sydney's all right. Geelong's pretty tough. Depends on how their midfield is by round 20. Then you kind of got you got West Coast at the end. So if you're playing for leagues, you got West Coast and Hawthorne. That's uh, a good matchup. And then, as a defender, we're going with really the only guy available. So I really do want Sicily. But I can't get to him. So if I was to trade him in this week, uh, would it still allow me to do what I want to do? So the forward I'm going with is Keys. Yeah, it wouldn't allow me to do it. I guess I could go like Mitchell out instead. But I think Mitchell still has a bit of money to make. But yeah, so Sinclair. Not scoring like he was last year. Taking on a bit more of a defensive role. Um, I mean, looking at this, this is tough. Oh, that's tough. Okay, uh, that's that's not great. Uh, I mean, yeah, oh my, oh, I'm really sacking the season. I don't. Do I just go Mitchell out? I might just go Mitchell out. Like, ah, oh, Sinclair's history is not good. Do that. Again, it's broken. Why does it keep breaking? <laughs> um, it shouldn't, but okay, whatever. I just have to do this then to make the trade go through. Then I can modify it. So it will be Atkins upgraded to Sinclair, Siebel upgraded to Keys, and then Brayshaw brought in for like a mixture of it all. Um, he's kind of be being brought in off the Oliver money. But I've kind of spread it around. I've got a couple of players for that Oliver money. So we've got a whole field playing this week. It doesn't really matter what I do. Um, but yeah, if I... I should be able to reverse this, right? So if I go Combin. First Sinclair. Why is it not letting me do that? Is it because I have to move him there? Ah, uh, well, I'll fix it up. doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm looking at the optics of the team, it's not amazing. So move that. We've got, this is going to be the completed forward line if I go with this, which I probably, I think Keys is kind of locked in. So he's playing midfield again and going off last year, which I can't, can I see here? When he was in the midfield last year, look at this stretch here. So... Uh, he, he's good in the midfield. He's a, a proper premium player in the midfield. Now what I could do, uh, I can't remember how short I was on uh, Sicily. If I go Chad Warner. So Chad Warner's having a hell of a three-game stretch of like three to four games. Uh, since Mills went down, which was against one of these two, 104, 137, 112... Good touch numbers. Um, efficiency is hit or miss, but it's good enough. Um, so if you went with him, I guess... Has he had his buy? Is he the same one? Yeah, he was. He, uh, round 12. You got West Coast in there. Uh, no Hawthorne. Is whatever. I could go with this. Uh, and then go Sicily to... Uh, am I going to be 1k short? 
Sicily. So I think I have enough playing guys just around that it covers that round 14 by. Let me just have a look. So this is the issue. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to have Sin Chin Kata by then. Uh, let's just say I do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Because I think he's going to be staying. Uh, maybe sixteen. One of these guys play. That's a bit tough. But then I guess Hobbs. I'm moving on. Him. I'm moving on. And Day. I might move on. They might be my next three trades. Yeah, something like that. We'll see. I actually think that's fine. Um, maybe I'm stressing a bit too much about round 14. So, uh, vice captain, captain this week. I'm actually going to go Warner, I think. Or do I go like a Bont? Uh, but yeah, I mean, as I was saying. So this is completed forward line. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to have to keep all day. Um, I don't see how I'm getting out of him honestly. So value mids that I could bring in round four. I guess maybe Brayshaw. What's Brayshaw's break even? I'll use this for me to see this way. Yeah? Break even of 78 uh, against Richmond. He could score like 150. I wonder what he goes up. I mean projected 145 goes up to 611. That's not terrible. As long as it's not like 6.30 or anything like that. Um, yeah, it could be Brayshaw here and then go. Bont, Zeret, Laird, Neil, Green, Warner, Brayshaw, Day. Ah, it's not good, is it? All right, well, that's stuff I have to put up with. Um, Captain C is... I feel like you have to go Merit, right, against Carlton? Unless they bring like an Ed Kerno or something like that. I'd probably go. If you have Petrarca, I'd go him. Um, Brayshaw, I think, is a good sh uh, good shout at Optus. No one from GWS. Uh, maybe if you, if you go in a Bont or a, a Warner or Steel, um, maybe some people have Steel when he was real cheap. You could go. On, you could go like Neil into like Laird or something like that. I don't know. I think I'm going to go with this. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you all next week. Tasty out.